Hey, Andy, welcome to the His and Her Money Show. Hello, Andy. Hello. Thank you so much for having me, guys. I'm really excited to be here. And we are really excited to have you here because you are here to share an incredible story of debt elimination and debt freedom. And we know that our audience can't wait to hear how you are able to make that happen. But before we do that, can you just take a moment and introduce yourself to everybody that's tuned in to the show right now and let them know what you are all about? Sounds good. My name is Andy Hill. I am a husband of seven years, a father uh, with a five-year-old little girl and a three-year-old little boy. And um, life's pretty exciting in my life right now, being a father and uh, a busy guy. And, and part of being busy is I, I host a podcast called Marriage, Kids, and Money. Uh, obviously fits in well with our conversations today and what you guys have got going on in your world. And i um, been doing that for about a year and blogging as well at the same site, marriagekidsandmoney.com. Love it. Awesome. So let's talk about the debt that you were in. What type of debt was it and how much of it did you have and how long did it take you to pay it all off? Sounds good. Yeah. Um, my wife and I got together in 2010. And when we got together, we both carried a little bit of debt into that marriage. So I had about $27,000 in student loan debt that I had accumulated from my MBA program. I had just assumed that if you go back and get your MBA, they automatically give you more money. So I just had to you know, go and get the MBA, right? So, you know, following, following what you're supposed to do. And, uh, additionally I had leased an Audi, uh, an Audi a four at the time too, because, you know, when you're making whatever, $40,000 a year, you need a luxury car. I think you just, you know, <laughs> so absolutely. And then my wife, uh, also she was student loan debt free, which helped a lot, but, uh, she had also had an affiliation or a, uh, affinity to to driving an Audi as well. So she had about $20, $21,000 on a, a car loan there. So all told, before we said I do, or right around the time we said I do, we had about $48,000 of debt together. Nice. Now, I, but none of the things that you listed are technically out of the, the norm. Uh, a couple of cars, some student loans, that's typical for most Americans. Um, yeah. But for some reason or another, once you all got married and came together, something clicked where you felt and your wife felt that although this is the typical way that most people are living, um, most people have debt in their lives of this fashion. This is not something that we want in our lives moving forward. Talk to us. Help us understand what got you all to that point. How did you all come to that conclusion? Yeah, so we we got together. We got married and we were having a great life together. Double income, no kids you know, living it up, having a good time. Like you said, not a lot of credit card or no credit card debt or anything like that. But, you know, we had built up uh, some debt, about $48,000. And, you know, we started thinking about more than ourselves. We started about thinking about, well, we're going to, we're probably going to want to have a family soon. And, you know, we started thinking that maybe we want to just make sure we are as financially set as we thought, you know, double income. We think we're rich, right? You know, uh, she's making good money. I'm making good money. Um, we, we thought we were rich, but we really started to look into it as we were planning for our future and planning for our family. So we started diving into some books and listening to some radio shows and watching some TV shows. One of the TV shows we liked to watch uh, around that time was the Susie Orman show. And she had a segment called, I think it was called, how am I doing where people, write in or they call in and they give all the information about how they're doing. And then Susie gives them a pass fail grade uh, on, on how they're doing with their lives. And one of the terms that stood out to us in that segment was net worth. And we said, hmm, net worth. I wonder what ours is. Surely we have a high net worth because we're making so much money. So we looked into that, did the little math problem and found out that we uh, we weren't rich. We had about a negative $50,000 net worth. Um, so, you know, our debt didn't help, but also we didn't have very many assets to, uh, to help either. So we weren't really investing in our retirement very well. And, you know, we had, uh, you know, kind of underwater on our mortgage. So all these things sort of to come to fruition. And we said, wow, we're really not in the best position, uh, that we should be, especially for thinking about having kids and trying to, you know, make some positive impact on our future. So it was that at that point that we decided that we needed to make a change. And how long did it take you guys to pay off this? So 
<clears throat> so at that point, it was um, it was around maybe four or five months after we got married. So maybe like the September time frame, fall time frame of 2010. And once we said, hey, let's clean this up. You know, we're making good money. We we can do this. It took us about 12 months. So we we worked pretty hard and and got it all done. It's really, really hard. So talk about the mindset that you both had to put yourself in in order to say, you know what, let's just stay focused. I know that we probably want to do some things, but we want to pay off this debt. Yeah, I think it was a mindset of, you know, just focusing and trying to educate ourselves as much as possible so we could get it cleaned up as as quick as possible. We became very intentionally about uh, intentional about our spending. Uh, we met every month uh, at the beginning of the month for what we dubbed the budget party where we would get together, look at our numbers from the previous month, and then plan our, our numbers for the next month. The party aspect uh, came from me. I was trying to convince my wife to uh, you know, have a party with me uh, once a month to look at our budget, eat some, you know, eat some pizza, have some wine, have some fun with it. And uh, she, she was nice enough to come to that party every month, and I really appreciated that. And we, we still do it seven years later. So, Now, talk about that aspect um, because you all realized that you all weren't in the best position possible and you all decided to do something about your finances. Was it uh, like total uh, serenity or were you all able to connect instantly and see eye to eye and this is how we're going to do it. We're going to set this budget and we're going to knock this debt out. Or did one of you all kind of see the light sooner than the other and then had to get the other on board? Because there are a lot of people listening right now that are married that would love to get the, the ball moving in regards to getting out of debt, getting their finances in order. But their, their um, spouse doesn't really see that things are as bad as the other does. So talk about that dynamic and how you all were able to kind of get on the same page. Yeah, I think that uh, maybe I had a little bit more excitement about it. Uh, sometimes I get carried away with things. I'll read something and I'll say, we need to do that full force. And um, my my wife understood where we needed to go, but maybe she wasn't as excited about it as I am. Like she doesn't she doesn't also host a podcast about money. We'll just say that. Um, so the er, you know the early conversation weren't wasn't always sunshine and rainbows. Uh, you know we had a lot of disagreements in the beginning, but as we came together to understand where we wanted to go, the the common ground was meeting every month and having that budget get together and understanding the the spending and debt payoff plans as the month began. And that was sort of our level set for the month. We can agree on it. And then throughout the month, we didn't really have to discuss or argue or bicker about what money was going to be spent or utilized because we already made that plan at the beginning of the month. So that sort of helped. But yeah, I mean, it's not, it's not always sunshine and rainbows for sure. There was definitely some mistakes I made through the process. I got into a fella named Dave Ramsey, pretty hardcore, read a lot of that stuff. And I said, well, if he says that, that's, that's pretty much the Bible. I got to go. I got to, I got to do it verbatim, sweetheart. So we had credit cards at the time. And, um, part of his philosophy is to have no credit cards and that's okay. That works for some people. And for us at the time, I thought we had enough responsibility, you know, to, to have the credit cards, but according to the book, uh, I, I learned that they were evil. So I, I, I subtly convinced my wife, uh, you know, through some conversations, r- repeated conversations, that um, maybe we should just take a break from credit cards and just see how that goes. And she's a sweetheart, and she allowed that craziness to happen. And what we found five years later, after we had no credit cards, is that our spending didn't really change all that much. We had the discipline. We'd been meeting on the budgets each month. So um, we went back to them after, you know, after not having them for five years. And that was sort of just like a learning process and thing, you know, that was my bad. Uh, but my, my wife's very patient with me and my learning process. And that's it's a lot of trial and error. But yeah, no, I, I guess overall, you know, it's 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 challenging, uh, but you have to figure out what works best for you. And you'll do that through education and trial and error, in my opinion. So it sounds like you are the... the, the um more prone to studying this stuff and figuring out strategies and you got a little overzealous, right? So looking back, if there's somebody who is you, who's in your position, who who eats this stuff up and they're trying to figure out how to get their spouse on board, you said it was a mistake to kind of shove it down your wife's throat. What would you have done differently if you could? 
Yeah. Uh, another good example of that, to your point, is um, the way I approached her in the beginning. Uh, I, you know, I read those books and I said, you know, hey, I think after reading this book, we should sell your car right away and drive a beater around. And that's that's not the best way to approach your spouse in this situation. You need to speak to them. And it, obviously, I got crickets from that too. You need to speak to them in terms of of things that that make them happy. You know, how would it feel, sweetheart, if we were able to take a vacation each year without the guilt of paying it off? You know, years and years afterward. How would it feel if we were able to fully fund our kids' college funds so they don't have to ever worry about paying? For school, you know, how would it feel if we had enough money to be financially independent, where at least you don't have to go to work anymore, and you can stay at home and take care of the kids? Th these are like more, these are more convincing arguments than saying, "Hey, I want you to, you know, lose something. I want to take away your luxury car, sweetheart." What do you think about that? So it's just more speaking in terms of things that that um, you know, you know, push towards their dreams and goals as well. So yeah, you got to think of it from that perspective. So now you guys were able to pay off this $48,000 worth of debt in like 12 months, which is amazing. So I know our audience is, you know, wanting to know, well, how did you do that? So practically speaking, what were some of the strategies or some of the things that you guys did in order to knock it out so quickly? Absolutely. And, you know, it's it's not always that easy for a lot of people. And I will say that we had a double income at the time, no kids, and we were able to essentially live on my salary and use hers to pay off the debt. So I made about $70,000 at the time and she made about $60,000. So essentially we could live on mine, you know, use hers to pay it off. But if you're used to living on 130, you live on 130, right? So, I mean, it was a big change. It might not sound like really, oh, that was really tough, but you have to change that mindset in order to live on it and intentionally spend that way. So we had the advantage of that. I will say that. Uh, the other thing that we did, I mentioned that we get together on those, um, you know, the budget get togethers each month. That was actually really, really helpful, you know, to come together, not only review our spending each month and then make plans for the future, but also talk about our dreams. Why are we doing this? Why are we paying off the $48,000 debt? What is that going to do for us in the future that will allow us to have the lives that we want? And, and with that motivation, that monthly sort of, you know, rah-rah session, it got us, it got us kind of fired up. And then lastly, you know, there's lots of different methods to paying off debt. There's the snowball. There's the avalanche. We like to use the debt hatred method. It's I hated my student loan so much. I didn't even care what interest rate they were versus the car. I'm like, I wanted to get rid of those first. Uh, I, you know, it, it did have a higher interest rate than the car, but we sort of just wanted to go for the one we hated the most. And so we, you know, each month we would have an automatic payment that would go at that student loan until that was completely paid off. We would keep that same intensity and use that that same dollar amount that we were paying on the student loans and then, then throw that now at the car. And in um, September of 2011, we had one more payment to make, about $3,000 on the car, and we were, we were set to go. So we used those, those three strategies. You know, working together with your spouse, if you've got a double income, take advantage of that. Uh, meet monthly on a budget and then choose a method that works for you to pay off the, the debt as fast as possible. Now you said a word that's offensive to most people. You said it multiple times, right? You keep saying the word budget, okay? And that offends a lot of people. Cash flow planning is more sexy, right? <laughs> <laughs> right. So from your perspective, how imperative was it for you and your wife to learn jointly, together, collectively on how to create and stick to a budget successfully. How important was that for you all to achieve the ultimate goal of becoming debt-free? Honestly, I think it's one of the most important things. It does so many things. It, it, it forces you to learn about finances. It forces you to take a real hard look at your spending because if you're not doing a budget or if you're just spending just how you spend, it's 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 out of control. I mean, you can't you can't actually predict where you're going to be each month. It's it's there's no intentionality. There's no plan. So it really helped us to focus. And I loved the aspect of that's where we came together as a couple and planned for the future. Just dreaming together and thinking about where we wanted to be each month was fun. And that brought some you know good times into it. So yeah, I I think it's one of the most important things. And we still do it today. We we did it. 
one in year one of our marriage. It's November first today. After I'm done talking to you guys, we're gonna go do it. We, you know, we're we're very excited about uh, you know where it's led us. And I want to talk a little bit more about another strategy that you mentioned that you all use, which was you all um, used one income to live on and the other to get out of debt. And I want to dive a little bit deeper into that right after this commercial break. Does your credit score have you down and looking for solutions? You may just find the answers you're looking for with Credit Sesame. Credit Sesame is your solution for a free no-hassle credit score, credit analysis, and tips for managing your money. They are here to help you take control of and have the tools you need to bring about a bright financial future. Get empowered today. There's no credit card required. Receive identity theft protection up to $50,000 and discover a marketplace for credit and loan officers that will help you get to your next level. Visit hisandhermoney.com forward slash credit sesame for more details. So, Andy, right before we went to break, you were talking about some of the strategies that you and your wife used to get out of forty eight thousand dollars of debt in 12 months, which is insane. (laughs) One of the things that you all did was you all made the conscious decision that you all were no longer going to live on two incomes, although you both had two incomes and that you all were going to live on just one. In theory, that sounds like, yeah, super easy. Let's just stop using yours and just use mine. But in reality, that is tough. I don't care what your two incomes are. If you both make 25, if you both make 250 a year, you know, to to just all of a sudden Mm -hmm. put the brakes on and say, listen, we are going to just live on part of the income that we've been living on is no easy feat. Number one, after you got past the, the theory the idea of it and actually started to walk it out and live on part of the income that you all were living on. What was the toughest part about doing that? And if somebody is listening who maybe they can't slash in half or or go as drastic as you did, what would be your advice to them on how they can apply this strategy to their own situation? That's a great question. I think in the beginning for us, it was very difficult difficult to just jump right into it and say, this is what we're doing because we had gotten used to a lifestyle that uh, we liked and it was fun. Uh, So some of the things that we had to do that were a little tough in the beginning were saying no a lot more than we used to. You know, coming into our marriage, we were in our 20s. We like to go out to the bar. We like to go to concerts. We like to go to nice dinners because we're young and single and we're trying to find the one that we want to be with. And, you know, they're out there, right? They're at the bar. You got to go to the bar. So <laughs> so we had to say no a lot more to some of our friends that, you know, weren't quite married yet or weren't going down the path that we were interested in with regard to paying off debt. But once we told them, once we told our friends, our family, you know, what we were doing, they were understanding and they were supportive. And that's okay. I think some people are maybe worried about offending family or offending friends, thinking that they're going to lose them forever. I think if there's a period of time in your life where you're going to say, hey, for the next two years or the next, you know, three months or, or 12 months, we're going to do some pretty crazy stuff. And it's going to it's going to require us not to be able to go on, you know, go out to dinner with you guys uh, and, or go on this vacation. But if you can stick with us, we're your friend, we're your family and just support us in the long run. You'd be surprised if they're real close family and friends, they're going to be supporting you and patting you on the back. So I think some people are just afraid of changing their lifestyle uh, and it affecting, you know, their everyday life. So, true. so were there any obstacles along the way while you guys were on this debt payoff journey? Did you all hit any bumps in the road or maybe you had a pause for a minute or something happened? You had to handle something. Were there any obstacles that you guys had to overcome throughout this process? <clears throat> I think generally uh, both my wife and I sometimes have cases of uh, the I wantsies. You know, um, you know, for me, it's I'm a very much about experiences. I love going to concerts. I love going on trips if I can with my family. Uh, for my wife, she loves home decor. She loves to make the house look beautiful. Home goods is her her main spot. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Yeah, and um, she also likes clothing. So I mean, some of some of these things, it was difficult for us in the beginning to say, you know. We're gonna hit that number right away in month one, and it and it didn't happen in month one or month two really. I mean, it just takes a couple months for you to get used to it, and you know some conversations on both sides. You know, hey Andy, we we really can't go to that concert again because 
you know, we, we got, we got some goals to hit and, you know, same thing on her side, you know, maybe we can't decorate as much in our house right now. Uh, so some of those conversations had to happen in the beginning and yeah, there were a little bumps in the road, but as we kept on looking and making sure that we wanted to hit that goal of being debt free before our first daughter was born, uh, that kept on hitting in our mind. We were, we were thinking, hey, we want to have kids and we want to be debt free before they even come. So that was always our, our North Star uh, to help us keep moving forward. So was that the way that you all stay motivated throughout this journey? Because a lot of people get the idea to get out of debt. A lot of people get the idea of I need to make better choices with my finances and they're motivated at the beginning. But as time goes on, they lose motivation a little bit or they lose motivation altogether and then they just kind of go revert back to their old ways. How were you all able to stay motivated throughout this journey and not return back to your old ways or not give in to the temptations of buying this and buying that or going here and going there and getting off track? Yeah, I think it was a combination of that. You know, we were very excited about becoming debt free, consumer debt free before our daughter came into the world. We we found out that my wife was pregnant in the summer of 2011, and that just sort of motivated us even more to keep pushing forward and have that happen before we before we had our, our first child. Also, it was just an opportunity, you know, to to charge down this road. We we started to get kind of excited about it. Every every month we would meet, we'd start to see those numbers, and it's like, oh, this this can happen. Fifty thousand dollars doesn't look so big anymore now that it's 20,000. So it started to look what this this is this can actually happen. So we got motivated. It just became a really cool thing that Nicole and I would partner on together and uh each month it became a new exciting uh get together when we saw where the numbers were. So uh f- you know, family opportunities to to you know become debt free before our our child was born but also just a great way for our my wife and I to partner and have fun. Yeah. So what type of impact did this have on your marriage? I'm, I'm assuming that it brought you guys closer. Or... Absolutely. Yeah. I would say, you know, the act of doing the budget is maybe maybe the business side of things. But then the dreaming together and thinking about where you want to go, that brings you a lot closer with your spouse. And that, and that happened for us, too. And the fact that we did it early on in our marriage was pretty huge for us, I think. You know, we we got on on this on this track uh, in year one, year two of our marriage, and it's kind of set the tone for where we want to be in our lives. Sometimes she's got to calm me down because I get a little excited, like the stuff I talked about earlier in the in the interview. Uh, but uh, we, we're good yin and yang, man. She helps me to be fun and live a little and uh, enjoy life, and then uh, you know I uh, I ruin her uh, home decorating, so things like that. <laughs> I love it. So paint the picture. For everybody who wants to achieve what you achieve, take us to that day, that glorious day where you made that very last debt payment. Set the scene and tell us how did that go? Sounds good. Yeah, we were we were nearly done with the car loan. We had about three thousand one hundred and seventy seven dollars and sixteen cents just about left on the car loan. And uh, you have to contact Audi Financial Services when you want to make that payoff. So we reached out to them and said, hey, we want to we want to make this complete. They send you an official document that says this is what you owe and how much you how much you have to, you know, to pay and where to send it. Uh, My wife and I uh, sat down at our kitchen table. We looked at that document. We had enough money saved up based on our, you know, our diligent uh, get togethers that we were able to just write a check uh, and send it off to them. And we we celebrated. We had a good time. She was four months pregnant, so we didn't pop any champagne or anything like that. But what we did do is we got in her her Audi and uh, we took a drive. And this drive was a little different than all the other drives before that because this car was completely paid for, and we were we were headed off and in, uh, into the sunset per se in a in a new life. So we were very very happy with that day. Awesome. Awesome. Now, speaking of that new life, am I correct in that you all begin to attack the mortgage after that? That is right. Yes. So that intensity didn't didn't subside. You know, we wanted to focus on other areas of our life too. focus on retirement planning and, uh, you know, starting a 529 when our daughter came into the world right, uh, you know, on day one. So we were very excited about that. But then, yes, we continued to battle debt like it was a you know nasty stank in our house, and we wanted to get rid of it completely. So we are, as of today, we are uh, one month away from paying off the mortgage on our four hundred thousand dollars house, and we're just 
so excited about life right now to be completely debt free. How long did that take? So we, yeah, so we got our house um, in December of 2013. We got a 15 year mortgage and it was a $200,000 loan at that point. And we said, okay, I'm, I'm good with upgrading the house, you know, move it because we got two kids at this point. We want to get a little ha bigger house. Okay, fine. But what can we do to pay this thing off in crazy amount of time? What can we do, do to pay it off in five years? And we just made a plan at that point to put extra payments towards the mortgage every month. Uh, I would get paid 26 times a year instead of the typical 24. So we just pretended we only got paid 24 times a year. We'd take those two extra paychecks throw those at the mortgage. If I ever had any, um, you know, good year where I'd get a bonus at work or we had some crazy Craigslisting happening, that would all go towards the mortgage. So we just kind of got crazy with it a little bit, but enough where we still were able to live our lives and enjoy it. Uh, when you've got two tiny kids, there's not a lot of time for travel anyway or going to the bar anymore or going to fancy dinner. So we took advantage of this time before our kids even turned, you know, five, our daughter's five now heading to kindergarten and uh, yeah, we, we just got pretty intentional with it. And now, yeah, we're, we're a month away from, from making it happen. It's amazing. So depending on what um, time of the year that you guys may be listening to this show, they will be completely mortgage-free December of 2017. That's amazing. <laughs> amazing. <laughs> That's amazing. So is your, was one of the concepts, um, are you guys still living off one income or is your wife now at home with the kids? Yeah, at one point, uh, I was lucky enough to get a new job, and at that point, uh, Nicole, when, when our when our second child was born, she had gone part time, and then when our second child was born, we, you know, modified our budget again and said, hey, what can we do to have Nicole be able to stay at home? She she liked her career enough, but not enough to you know stick around and and you know, and, and not be home with the kids. She was more excited about being a mom and being home with the kids than she was about her career. So we modified things a little differently in our budget to make it work. And yeah, she's been at home with uh, Calvin and Zoe for the past three years now. And yeah, we've been able to make it work. So life's good. That is amazing. I absolutely love that. Congrats to you guys. Thank you very much. Yeah, we're very excited. So after the mortgage is paid off, what's the next goal that you guys are having? Because you're going to be completely debt free all the way. Yes. yes. So, I mean, I'm, I'm like, I don't know what to do with myself, right? No. So, uh, you know, the, the a big thing that families uh, are doing or could consider doing is increasing their passive income, you know, uh, doing what we can to look into real estate investment. We're thinking about next year making our first, you know, single family home, buy and hold uh, rental property and uh, starting to build our passive income. Becoming financially independent is the next goal for, for this Hill family. And it's going to take a little while, uh, but we're learning a ton and having a lot of fun doing it. So that's that's what our next goal is in life. I think it's an awesome goal. Looking back over your whole journey to debt freedom, what do you think was or has been the biggest lesson about life in general that you have learned? I think if you if you apply focused effort and intentionality, I think anything can be done. I mean, big, long running distances, uh, you know, losing a bunch of weight, uh, paying off debt. I, I really believe that if you put, a, you know, intentionality and focus, really anything can be accomplished. So that was a big, a big thing for me because originally when we saw that number of $50,000 or, or our mortgage loan of $200,000, Thinking about that ever being at zero just seems crazy. But if you've got a plan and you automate it and you make it easy, it's it's. I mean, it takes some time and patience, but it can happen. Anything can happen. So true. So true. So, are there any book recommendations that you can recommend to our audience? Um, it doesn't have to necessarily be just financial related, but any books that have helped you along this journey that you would like to share. Yeah. Um, I would say for debt payoff, I still really love Dave Ramsey's uh, Total Money Makeover. I think that's a great place for people to start uh, if they're looking to battle debt. I mean, he's the debt monster. He hates it. So it's a great book if you want to battle the debt. I think for just breaking down the complexities of money, because sometimes people think that becoming a millionaire really means something when it really doesn't. I really like Millionaire Next Door by Thomas Stanley. 
And then lastly, on the investing side, I had a good time reading Money Master Your Game by Tony Robbins, a a good sort of open book. Uh, textbook. Yeah. It's, it's, oh, what is it? 600, 700 pages. <laughs> Knock you out. But it'll help you with, uh, you know, learning the the details of uh, passive investing and index funds and the benefits of that, too. So, yeah, some books there that have helped me out a lot in the financial financial side. Yeah, three for three. Read all three of those, and uh, I second all three of those recommendations. So, Andy, if there is somebody listening who love to hear how you were able to get out of debt and think it's great, but uh, when they look in the mirror and they look at their numbers, they're not sure if they have what it takes to become debt free like you and your wife have done. What words of encouragement would you give to that person if you could talk to them one on one? Yeah, I would say with the right tools, the right motivation, the right resources, I think anything can anything can be done. So read a good book that that as is from people who've done this that give you the plan to do it. Listen to a great podcast that's motivating like his and her money. Check it out. It gets you excited. You're working with people that uh, share your similar values too. If you're married and you're trying to figure things out, listening to a podcast like this is very motivating because you can see yourself being like, I'm just like those guys. I could do that. So, you know, connecting with with resources like that, uh, Facebook groups, there's a ton of Facebook groups where people are going through same challenges and it's a great way to, you know, share your victories, learn about other people's victories. There are people out there doing this, making a change. They're not millionaires. They're, you know, they're just regular everyday people trying to make a di- make a difference in their in their family's lives and their family's future. So, get out there, get motivated and uh, learn from a lot of people. It's exciting. Absolutely. You know what? Speaking of great podcasts, tell everybody about your podcast, your website, and how they can connect with you. Thank you so much. I really appreciate being on your show. My podcast is Marriage, Kids, and Money. You can find it on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, and uh, check me out at my uh, website, marriagekidsandmoney.com, where I am connecting with uh, incredible people like uh, yourselves, as well as some motivating folks that are really you know, exciting people about where they are with their families and, and where they're going with the, the future of, uh, of their money. It's, it's, it's a great time right now uh, in personal finance. And I know you guys all about that, too. Absolutely. Andy, this has been super incredible and inspiring. And we're super glad that you were able to take some time out of your busy schedule to share your story with our audience today. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for having me.